In 1802, the English chemist and physicist William Hyde Wollaston found that there were dark lines in the spectrum of sunlight. He didn't know that his observation would change the science of astronomy forever. A detailed study of the dark lines was carried out by German physicist Joseph von Fraunhofer, who rediscovered them in 1814. He mapped a total of 574 lines, labeling the most prominent with the letters A through K, and weaker lines with other letters and numbers. Unfortunately, he died in 1826 at the age of just 39, before he could solve the mystery of the origin of the dark lines. Because of Fraunhofer's detailed work, the dark lines are also known as Fraunhofer lines. About 45 years after Fraunhofer's death, Robert Bunsen and Gustav Kirchhoff realized that several Fraunhofer lines occur at the same position as some characteristic emission lines of heated elements. For example, if sodium is heated, sodium atoms emit yellow light at wavelengths of 589.6 nanometers and 589 nanometers. These bright lines in the sodium emission spectrum match the D1 and D2 Fraunhofer lines. So this mystery was solved. Like other forms of electromagnetic radiation, visible light is generated in the sun's core, then travels to the surface and then on into space. While passing through the photosphere, the sun's outer layer from which light is radiated, some wavelengths of light are absorbed by various elements present in the photosphere. These wavelengths of light are therefore absent in the solar spectrum, and in their place we see Fraunhofer lines. After Bunsen and Kirchhoff's discovery, studies of the solar spectrum intensified, and it was determined which wavelengths were absorbed by the atoms of which elements. This revealed which elements existed in the outer parts of the Sun. The relative concentration of the elements could be calculated from the darkness and width of the Fraunhofer lines. The same principle could be applied to the spectrum of light from other stars, opening up the new field of astrophysics. By looking at stellar spectra, scientists could now easily determine the elemental composition of stars. This has led to some surprising discoveries. For example, the star in this photo, called SM0313, is one of the oldest stars known. Why do we believe that? When the universe was first formed, the only atoms it contained were hydrogen and helium, together with a bit of lithium. So the first stars consisted almost entirely of hydrogen and helium. When astronomers led by Stefan Keller of the Australian National University examined the light of SM0313, they found that its iron content is 10 million times lower than that of the Sun. In fact, the lowest stellar iron abundance ever measured. This indicates that SM0313 formed a very long time ago when the universe itself was young and iron was scarce. It's extraordinary that we can discover so much about stars from the trickle of light that we receive from them. But thanks to the dark lines in their spectra, we have a way to learn what they're made of and much else besides.